so there's room for the CEOs. Um, they do a thousand things in any given week, but the one thing they do every day is they lead people um, in different in industries, in different uh, countries in some cases, in different environments. Um, it's what you did for all those years uh, coaching football. You lead teams. Um, what's the secret to leadership that you learned over those years? Well, I think when Father Hesburgh said to me before the press conference at Notre Dame, he said, I'm going to announce to the world that Lou Holtz is head coach at Notre Dame. He said, I'm going to give you that title because titles come from above. He said, what I cannot do is I cannot name you the leader. He said, players will determine if you're a leader. And so we talked about leadership, and this is what I believe it is. And what, number one, you have to have a vision where you want to go. I had a vision where I wanted to take an organization. And without a vision, you have nothing. Everything starts with vision. Number two, you have to have a plan of how you're going to get there. We had a plan on recruiting. Uh, at William and Mary, where we had more Marys than we had Williams, we, we had a plan on how we were going to recruit. You know, we played the Naval Academy, and on the balcony, they had the words Iwo Jima, Guadalcanal, Saipan, Baton. Our kids said, boy, what a schedule they play. <laughs> What we did is we just figured we needed to recruit somebody a strong safety and put them in the weight room, make them a defense. But you have to have a plan how you're going to do it. You have to lead by example. And I'll tell you, I can't begin to tell you how many times things have gone bad, got down on my knees, prayed that when I walked into a staff meeting or a team meeting, there wasn't any doubt in my mind that we had a vision where we wanted to go, a plan of how we're going to get there, and I was going to lead by example. But most important thing, we're going to hold people accountable for the choices they make. The difference between athletes today and 50 years ago, today everybody wants to talk about their rights and their privileges. 50 years ago, people talked about their obligation and responsibilities. And I'm one of these people that firmly believe you join a spouse, you join a team, you join a business. You have obligations to other people. If you want to fail, you have the right to fail. You do not have the right to cause other people to fail because you don't do everything to the very best of your ability. You choose to do drugs, drop out of school, join a gang, and get tattoos from head to bottom. You're choosing to have difficulty in life, and don't blame me. That's your choice you make, but I'm going to hold you accountable for the choice you make. And the last thing that I felt was critical, what are your core values? What holds a country together? What holds a family together? What holds a business together are core values. That core values are something you will not compromise. We had three core values and I had three rules. And, and let me tell you, I was in the lower half of my high school class. I, I, if it wasn't for me, there could have been no upper half of the class. I'm not very smart, but I keep life simple. There are only seven colors of the rainbow. Look what Michelangelo did with them. There's only seven musical notes. Look what Beethoven did with them. There's only 10 numbers. Look what Bernie Madoff did with those 10 <laughs> numbers. So, so, I'm not saying it's good, but what I'm saying is keep it simple. I had three rules. Do the right thing. Why is it important to do the right thing? Because if everybody will do the right thing, you generate a trust among the team. There's never a right time to do the wrong thing. There's never a wrong time to do the right thing. So we're going to do what's right. It's not right to find a teammate's wallet before he lost it. That's <laughs> called stealing, son. Uh, number two is we're going to do everything to the very best of our ability with time and life. Not because somebody's looking. It's just the way we live. And, and doing the best we can means you do little things. I see more people overlook little things, and little things make the difference. And the third thing we're going to do, we're going to care about one another. And that's our core values. We're going to be able to trust one another, going to be committed to excellence, and we're going to care about one another, and that's what makes a team, and that's what provides leadership. My wife said, how can you talk about caring about somebody when you have a bumper sticker on your car? We go to 8 o'clock mass. i got to park in the back of the lot and back the car in so they can't see it. The bumper sticker said, Jesus loves you. Everybody else thinks you're a <laughs> 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 On the bumper sticker.